Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. My name's Rich, the host around these parts, and I am so glad that you've decided uh, to tune in. Well, I've been trying to get this interview done for uh, for a couple times because I really want to <laughs> share uh, this. Bruce and I had some technical problems. Let's be honest, I had technical problems last time we did this. So Bruce Almond's with us today from Sugar Creek Baptist Church. Uh, this is a fantastic church, one of the fastest growing churches in the country. Uh, and today I want you to lean in because there's something about this church that I, is unique that I'm really hoping every church can uh, can learn from. Bruce, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Rich. It's great to be here. Yeah, no, glad to have you. Uh, why don't you tell us about Sugar Creek? Give us a sense of what people would experience this weekend and give us a bit of the story. Sure. Um, if you come uh, to our church this coming Sunday, you would discover we have a uh, place reserved for first-time guests to park. But outside of that, you will find no parking anywhere. Um, our church is so packed. Um, we only have 13 acres, and yet the church just for the last 40 years has continued to build and build and build and build. Mm. And we built on parking lot after parking lot. So right. we have, we have no place to park. Uh, but the places we do have are packed. Um, we do have three, uh, offsite parking locations and we have 14 shuttle buses that make this loop. Uh, over half of our attendees are shuttled in each Sunday morning. Mm. That's over, that's over 2000 people. That's we shuttle great. in from offsite. Um, when you uh, walk into our church, you will discover that we are certainly ethnically diverse and mm. possibly one of the most ethnically diverse churches in the, the, the country. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but we have over 90 different countries who attend That's our amazing. church. That's amazing. And, uh, and of those people, they speak 70 different languages. Wow. So anyway, it's it's that's a amazing. beautiful, beautiful experience. I can't now. How do you get people to park? I know that's not really what we're talking about today, but how do you get people to do that? I know a lot of churches struggle with the you know offsite yes. parking thing. There must be a yes. few things you've learned through that process. Well, there are uh, basically um, our pastor, our head pastor. I'm one yeah. of the associates, but our head pastor uh, makes a plea from the pulpit and right. just says, "Hey, would you be willing?" To, to make a missional move for the kingdom of God. Right. And we're right. not at, we're not we're not asking to go to Africa. Uh, we're just asking <laughs> we're just asking you to park across the freeway. Yes. And and there are some benefits to it. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, um, you get dropped off at the front door of the church right. underneath right. Uh, a rain protected covering. Right. Um, if you park on the regular parking lot, you're just gonna have to walk a long way in the rain. Yes. Now right, right, right. now now if you park off-site, you will have a short trek as well to the canopy yep. where the shuttle bus picks you up. But but bottom line, our pastors asked our people. They've responded well. Yeah. Um, I do think that we're probably getting close to getting as many people as are willing right. <laughs> to park off-site. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so there's a ceiling to That's that. That's amazing. And close. Yeah. Well, we, and that it's a, that alone is a fascinating story. But the thing that caught my attention is really about returners at your church. One of the things I've said, yes. and, and so many churches, is the problem isn't so much getting guests; it's getting them to stick and stay. And there seems to be something happening at Sugar Creek that, um, you know, that I want to make sure people know about. Can you give us a sense of that? Tell us a little bit about what happening, yes. particularly with return guests. Yes, and I'm super excited because yeah. um, this. This is one of two things that I am most passionate about in church work, and I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Uh, when a first-time guest comes to a church, and I'm referring right now of a non-Christ uh, follower, a non-Christian, um, most of those people do not receive Jesus and trust Him on their first Sunday at a church. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you can get them to return time and time and time again, right. a, a lot of these people, even adults, will trust Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so mm-hmm. I became burdened about this. Uh, probably 15 years ago, mm. when I read a, read a book, I don't even recall the name of it, but it, mm. it quoted a stat that said, only one in 10 first-time guests ever return to your church again. Yep. And so I have followed that um, all these 15 years, and that is still pretty typical right. for, for most churches. Yep. Um, when Sugar Creek contacted me about taking this position, um, I asked for some numbers. I said, I need to know how many first-time guests you're having per Sunday, and I need mm-hmm. to know how many of them return. And and they looked it up, and they were shocked. They said, "Oh no, we only have one in ten first time guests return." And I right. said, "Well, I said, don't feel too bad because that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. yeah. 
I said, however, um, we, we can help. Mm. And so, so I've been there now, Rich, for three years. Yep. And now, now we have right at 50% of our first-time guests return again. But that's not the most amazing part. <laughs> okay. The, mo- the, the most amazing part yep. is of those people that do return again, we keep 76% of those. That's keep- amazing. That's amazing. They either become a regular attendee or they become a member. Many of these people were not Christians when they first entered our door, and so they've trusted Christ. They've, yep. they've been baptized, and you know at least that's part of our church uh, tradition. Yep. And so it is amazing, and mm. it is so exciting and fun. I yeah, love it. So, I so it. I know. I, that's, this is what, <laughs> when I heard this, I, you know, I leaned in, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. If you've been around church world anywhere, you've heard the one in t- 10 stat. I've told that stat yeah. to lots of churches. I've seen that. The sure. fact that you're getting, you know, those two together is just, it, it's amazing. It really is incredible. Five times kind of industry average. It's obviously, right. you know, that's resulted in you being one of the fastest growing churches in the country and also resulted right. in um, needing to do offsite parking. So <laughs> right. um, why don't we dig into that? What would you say are, you know, you know, three things or two or three things that, you know, churches should be thinking about to try to inch towards a, you know, much better return rate and then ultimately stick. Yes. Uh, of course, you want a great Sunday morning experience. Yep. You know, and, and that includes you want good preaching, mm-hmm. you want good music, mm-hmm. and you want a welcoming environment. Mm-hmm. You want people to feel comfortable when they when they're there. Mm-hmm. And and this is more at this point in the journey, it's more about feelings than it is theology. Mm. You you want your guests to feel comfortable. You want them to not feel mm. threatened. Mm. You want them to feel valued, right. welcomed, and wanted. And so so that Sunday morning experience is, is probably half of the equation. Mm. Um, or shall I say a third of the equation. Yep. Um, a, a, a second thing I would say is you want amazing, quick follow-up. Okay, okay, good. Tell me about that. And, and the way we follow up here, we do no door-to-door visits. Okay. Now, years ago, I did that, right. and it worked. Yep. But I live in the Houston, a suburb of Houston, Texas, mm-hmm. and if you do a door-to-door visit here, it's more people view you more as an interruption than right. Right. than anything. They're yep. they're too busy for right. this, and so we basically have. I'm going to call it this. I've mm-hmm. never called it this before, but we basically <laughs> <laughs> we basically have a quick follow-up mail campaign. Okay, okay. Tell me about that. So now, just on the door-to-door thing, I agree. So I, I'm in. I'm a uh, uh, graduate of evangelism explosion, you know, yes, me er, too. <laughs> early, di- early days, I knocked on doors yeah. and asked those two questions. And sure. you know, there's at that point, that was 20 years ago at that point, I'm not sure right. it was that effective, um, at least for where we were, but, but I think it, it's even more so that case now, you know, I think that it, we are so cocooned people, th- their home right. is like this fortress. If you, you know, it's like you're, you assault them by knocking on the front door. So I agree, agree with that, but tell me about this kind of quick, this quick mail campaign. What does that look okay. like? Okay. Yeah, let me tell you. First of all, um, let me just start at the beginning and yeah. walk you through it. Um, we are one of the churches mm-hmm. that on Sunday mornings ask 100% of attenders to fill out a communication card every week. Yep. We really want to get information, not just from our guests, but from our own people for their prayer requests and other things. Mm-hmm. And um, we don't want to ask any guest on a Sunday morning to do something that we're not asking everybody else to do. Mm-hmm. So so we just have a two and a half minute script of asking everybody to fill out your communication card together right now and that kind of thing. Yeah. So we get information. Yep. Um, we also have a guest services area. Mm-hmm. People don't have to go there. It's mm-hmm. optional, but if they are willing to self-identify yep. and they will, they will receive gifts but here's what I've learned, Rich. A lot of churches give gifts to first-time guests. Mm-hmm. That will that will not even that will not even influence somebody to come back. Every church does it. Mm, interesting. Um, yeah. What 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 we what we're doing, and I believe we're all in the kingdom business together on the same team, not in competition. Yep. But but I'm I also realize we need to do more. Right. To wow to wow a guest into coming back than yeah. giving a first time gift. Yeah. So, so basically what happens is, um, on Monday afternoon at two o'clock, an email goes out from me mm-hmm. and it says, Hey, it was so good to have you at Sugar Creek Baptist church yesterday. Thanks mm-hmm. for being a part of our worship service. Um, hope you found it meaningful. Hope that the Lord moved in your life, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, we invite you back next week. And by the way, if you have 30 seconds, would you click here and take this five question survey to help us know how we can mm-hmm. better serve you? Mm-hmm. And so we hear back from three to five guests every week on what their first time experience was. And right. I've got three years of these surveys that right. uh, that we, we go through. Now that happens Monday at two. Mm-hmm. Um, at Tuesday at one o'clock, I have a team of people that come together with me mm-hmm. and our church averages, I'm gonna say we average 30 to 40 first time adult guests every week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we sit down, and, and it's important that not only does your mail campaign go out, but the, it can't look like a mail campaign right? because p- people throw the mail in the trash. Yes. So, so, so we do a handwritten card. Mm-hmm. Nowhere on this envelope is Sugar Creek Baptist Church identified. This is personal stationery of mine. It's right. Bruce Ammons, yep. you know, and um, it has a first-class stamp on it. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you cannot run it through a postage meter and mm. expect somebody to open it. Yes. So... So this this is non it looks like a birthday card. Right. Okay. Yes. Now 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 that is going to be opened. Yes. People open open those because they know Right. N- nobody has ever been insulted through a card that looks like a birthday card. Yes. Oh man. So they they, they open this. <laughs> so so they open Just wait wait a second Bruce. I hope people yeah. are listening in. You are dropping <laughs> So many value bombs here. Like you just are rolling over these things. Uh, but I hope people are listening, which is great. So keep going, keep going. Okay. Now here's what does happen when we get a birthday card or something that looks like it. Yeah. We, we're encouraged. Yeah. And sometimes there's money in it. Sometimes there's a gift card in it. Right. So we're going to open it. Yes. So, so we do, and, and here's the basic text. I, mm. This first card is from me. Right. Ideally, it would come from the senior pastor. Right. That has not worked at our church. So we right. did a side-by-side test and discovered we had as many return when I wrote the card as he. So we've swapped places in that. Yep. But but I do prefer the lead pastor to write this. But yep. if you're writing 30, 40 a week, right. Right. it is just hard. So I have a team of volunteers that help. We all write the same text. It basically says, hey, Rich, it was so good to have you worship, worship with us on Sunday. I want to invite you back next Sunday. Yep. I'm also enclosing a gift just because you matter to God. Mm. And you matter to me. Enjoy the Starbucks, Pastor Bruce. Right. So we do include a Starbucks gift card. Now we've yep. already given them a gift if they came by the guest service center. It's a coffee mug plus a book. Yep. Um, plus information about our church. Mm-hmm. But now this goes out in the Tuesday mail. So it's in their home mm-hmm. Wednesday. They may not check the mail then, but it's their Wednesday. It's mm-hmm. their Thursday. Mm-hmm. People know, hey, l- let me just rephrase this. Slow follow-up means you really don't care. Fast follow-up means you really do care. At mm-hmm. least that's the perception in your church guests. Yep. So we yep. just need to accept that and, and do go fast. Yep. Now, when people give, get that, it, it's a little bit of a wow, I think, for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is just the beginning for us, Rich, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. There are a lot of churches that send out a thank you for coming to our church. Yeah. There might, there might even be people who will put a... A five dollar gift certificate to the church's cafe if they'll come back, but I don't like doing that at all. And here's why: I don't want somebody to have to come back to my church to be blessed. Mm. I want somebody to feel blessed by our church, even if they never return again. Right, amazing. So I intentionally put a Starbucks card in that first mailing. Now, here is what I'm about to say: may be the biggest thing I'm going <laughs> to okay. say all day. Okay, and it's not it's not going to sound like a big deal. Yeah, but it's yeah. Huge. it's huge. We notice if these people who were first-time guests this past Sunday, if they show up again next Sunday or not. Hmm. If they show up, then they become second-time guests and we do something with them. If they don't show up, they're in a category that we call uh, the first-time guests, then absent. Mm -hmm. That group gets a letter. Now, I use stage personalities to write these letters. I'm one of the stage personalities, our lead pastor and our worship pastor. So mm-hmm. this second one comes from our uh, worship pastor. Mm-hmm. And here's, here's what it says. Hey, Rich, it was great to have you in church uh, l- last week, but we missed you this week. Mm. We, missed, we missed you. And, and we want to invite you back next week. Yep. We also yep. want to know if you have any prayer requests. Mm-hmm. We want to help you any way we can. And by the way, here is the URL to the pastor's message from Sunday. It was awesome. You will love it. Now, in this communication, I do provide a $5 
certificate people can use to come back to our church using our coffee shop or bookstore. Mm-hmm. Um, because um, I think it's fine to try to give them incentive to come back. Mm-hmm. But I don't like that to be the first thing. It, it feels manipulative to me. I want right. to get give without any expectation first. Yep. yep. And then I'm going to give and, and, and give them a little incentive to come back. Hmm. Um, but this is huge, and I'll tell you why. These one out of ten people who go, they go to, I'm sorry, the nine out of ten who don't return, they received a letter from the church the first time they attended, but they never hear from the church again. Right. Well, not only do these people hear from us, they hear from us fast the very next Sunday that they didn't show up. And so if you're a second time guest, you go into a a different list. That list receives a letter from our small group's pastor. Mm. He's not a stage personality, so we put his picture on the letter. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we explain our connect group kiosk area and explain to people, hey, here's one of the ways you can make friends fast in our church. That includes a $5 Sonic gift card in that. Now, if your husband and wife, anytime you hear me talk gift card, there will be two of them in there. Okay, okay. If, if you're a single, there's just one, but if you're husband and wife, you get two because we want to be generous to these people. Right. One of the fallacies in people's minds is all that the church wants is your money. Right. Well, we want to take that away real quick, mm-hmm. and so we don't even ask them for money, but we do give them a lot of gifts. Right. They see us as a generous church, not as a church asking for money. Yep. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so that... That, that happens with our second-time guests, and then all third-time guests get a letter mm-hmm. from our pastor inviting them to our lunch with the pastor's event, mm-hmm. which is a catered meal. It's not cheap. It's, you know, $20 a plate. Um, we, it's, with, it's one hour. Mm-hmm. You, eat, you eat, you meet the pastors, uh, you hear about our church. It's not a membership class in our church's uh, uh, situation, but there is a... a an explanation of membership at the close of that, and mm. people are given opportunity to become members right then and there. Right. Of course, right. you can become members of our church any Sunday, but right. but at, at that event, you know, we're really, you could almost consider this a funnel. And for, you, the, the numbers get smaller, but first-time guest, then first-time absent, then second-time guest, then third-time guest, and somewhere along this journey, people decide, hey, this place is for me. Right, right, right. And um, so, so anyway. Now, so in there, one quick kind of clarification. When, how are you discerning that people actually have come that second time? What, what are you that's, doing that's to, you know, to, to make sure people, you know, that you can, I get the bifurcation and all that, but what are you doing to yeah. ensure that people came? Okay. We can only go with what we know. Yep. And we use the communication card. Right, 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 right. Back to that. Because you, you're dumping all that data. Right, right, right. Now, the commu- now, let's say that you and your wife come the first Sunday and you fill out a card. You, then you come the second Sunday and you don't get out of the card. Mm-hmm. Well, then we, we don't know you were there. Right. So we, we send you the letter uh, and the $5 coupon uh, saying, hey, we missed you this past Sunday. Right. Well, you know you were there, but, but what it tells you is, wow, this card really, this church really right. pays attention to who fills out the card. Yes. And right. they really care about people. They, they're paying attention to the details. Mm-hmm. And... So, and, and it's an encouragement for you to go out and head and fill out the card next time because we're paying attention to these things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. That makes total sense. Yeah, that, right. Obviously, yeah, that, that's, that makes total sense for sure. You know, the thing I love, there's a lot there for folks. I hope people are listening. There's a lot there. The, what, the, uh, the thing I want to encourage people that are listening in, because you've chunked it down into, you know, we're going to literally follow up. We're going to do high intensity follow up. We're going to write a bunch of notes for the people that were there last week. Um, you know, there'd be a lot of churches that don't have 30 visitors a week. They would have, you know, maybe five or 10, um, who they could start there and say, Hey, let's, let's, let's do this. I think what happens is we wait for so long and then they get this big pile. Like if you waited a month and you got 120 of these things, there's no way you can write 120 cards. But the fact that you keep on it week in, week out, I think is a critical learning for people. It absolutely is. Um, it's it's such a high value to me and to our church that it oozes out of us. Right. I mean, we do, we, we do not let anybody fall through the cracks. Right. I mean, right. is it technically possible? Yes. But if you fill out a card, 
hey, we're going to love on you. Right, we're going to connect um, with you. Yeah, that's very good. And, yeah. Do you have, um, would you be willing to share uh, like a PDF or something like that of your connection card that's in the service? I'd love I'd love to share that. Put that in the show notes if it's available. If it's not, that's fine. You know, that's fine. Uh, let me look and see if I have one handy. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, that's great. Oh, we could check on that after. If people want to look in the show notes, they'll they'll see if it's there. If not, then we wouldn't have made, we weren't able to find it, which is still totally fine. If if that's okay, let's do that. Yeah, that's totally I, fine. I just don't have one handy. Yep, that's totally fine. Um, now you do uh, guest retention coaching for churches, right? You you help other churches who you know might be I interested. I do. In that. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I do. Yes. Well, basically, um, if a church is having um, a significant number of guests and they are uh, they're seeing this one in ten uh, return rate, um, and they want some help. Um, I, I do some coaching with those churches that are interested, and basically what it amounts to is I take them through our process. But uh, I spend um, at least an hour a week on the phone with them. Mm-hmm. This is this is usually uh, six phone calls mm-hmm. um, or Skype calls. Mm-hmm. It can be staff, it mm-hmm. can be volunteers, but certainly some key staff need to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really get to a lot of the whys behind it. For example, yeah. uh, these people will know um, on the second mailing, you've got to get it opened, but you can't handwrite everything. Right. And so we, we use a concept called lumpy mail, which is yep. just a marketing uh, mm-hmm. concept. Uh, another piece of mail people will open is if it's if there's something in it. Yep. There's a lump in here. Yep. Yep. I don't know if this is a pen. I don't yep. know what this is, but I'm going <laughs> to open it and see. So so we use these concepts to get each piece of our mail open. Yep. And so I go back with people on the why behind it and the heart behind it, which is to love and lead all people to life changing Christ, mm-hmm. and the what we do and why we do it. And then I get to know their church culture, mm-hmm. give them ideas, uh, basically hold them accountable if they want me to. You know, I give them assignments and say, hey, within the next two weeks, you guys need to have A, B, and C done. And they right. say, okay, we can do that. And you come back so, in a couple of weeks and talk yeah, about it. Yeah, what, that what, works. Um, how do people, if they want to get in touch with you to learn more about that, the coaching piece, before we jump into the lightning round, how, how could how could okay. they do that? Um, really, just uh, reach out to me at my church okay, uh, email address. Okay. I don't have a... I don't have a web page or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, right. um, it's um, it's B Ammons mm-hmm. at sugarcreek.net. Mm-hmm. B Ammons at sugarcreek.net. Right. I'll even give my cell phone out. It's 713-231-7727. It's already on my Facebook page, and everybody who wants it can find it. So you might as well have it, nice. too. <laughs> well, there you go. Another 5,000 people just got your phone. You know, t- please be yeah, nice. They, when you text them, text nice things. So that's yeah. good. This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Well, let's jump into the right lightning round, that part of the episode where we ask similar questions to everybody that's on the show. Super excited to have Bruce, Bruce with us today from Sugar Creek, doing all kinds of great stuff at their church. And it's exciting to hear, you know, some of the retention stuff that we've been talking about today. But Bruce, what is an online resource that you guys are using that's helping you or you're using that's helping you in your ministry? Um, I, I love, uh, it's a website called Workflowy. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it's personal time management stuff is what it is. It's it's basically li- a list management yep. software, but it's also on my phone and so also on my iPad, on my computer. So yep. I can I can add to the list. Um, you can create categories. You know, I've got all my volunteers' names and phone numbers in there. Mm-hmm. I, it's just an organizational tool, and I love it. Very cool. What's real, a what's real a, clean? Yeah, yeah, that looks good. What's a book you've read in the last six months to a year that's impacted your thinking or ministry? You know, I read one uh, this past week that I just love so much. I want to recommend it. Mm-hmm. Um, it. It's called How to Walk on Water When You Feel Like You're Drowning. Mm. And I'll tell you what it did for me, Rich, um, and I don't mind sharing this. This is mm-hmm. public knowledge. But but 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with depression, mm. anxiety, and mm-hmm. panic attack mm-hmm. uh, problems. And mm-hmm. so I've off and on struggled with those things over the years. Mm-hmm. And um, this book that I read this week. It's by Tommy Nelson, mm-hmm. uh, pastor of Denton Bible Church, a uh, well-known pastor, mm-hmm. but uh, he went through his own issues. Oh, very and, cool. Man, this book, you know, ministry, even if you're not depressed, you get down at times. Yep, yep. And th- this book just helps you to realize how, man, even if you're in a position where you feel like you're about to drown, you can have victory over that. Mm, and very cool. So 
it was powerful for me this week. That's very cool. Very cool. I have to check that out. Um, what's yeah. another ministry that you're looking at that inspires you these days? I love Church of the Highlands, and Chris Hodges is the pastor there. I've Fantastic. never met him. Yeah. I only know th- I only know them from a distance, but I am planning a trip out there. Um, they, Chris is one of the uh, pastors that helped uh, to found the Ark Network, mm-hmm. which is an association, church planning association, which is powerful. Yeah. Um, but that church, you know, I've watched some of. He's got a simple four step process. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they do a lunch after church every week. One mm-hmm. of them is basically membership class the first of every every month. Mm-hmm. The next one is um, small groups. The next one is serve on mm-hmm. their dream team, mm-hmm. and the next one is share, which is evangelism slash inviting people to church and. And they just have people going through these four c- classes mm. all the time. Mm-hmm. They're organized super well. Yeah, um, they really preach the gospel clearly, and a, a lot of people, including adults, come to Christ through their ministry. Yeah. Uh, last last I heard, they were the second largest church in America with about a fifty thousand plus weekend attendance. Yeah, it's fantastic. We've I've had a couple. I haven't had Chris, but I've had a couple leaders from Church of the Highlands on the podcast. Okay. They are okay. clear thinkers and yes. love their their heart and. Um, you know, I know, but they could be learning from you. I think they could add some stuff in, you know, that, that we were talking about today. If you could get 15 yeah. minutes with any leader alive today, who would you want to get that with and why? That is easy. It, for me, it's Rick Warren. Mm, nice. Um, Rick, at, you can look up anybody online and find people grappling about him, but let me just tell you this about Rick Warren. Um, I grew up in a conservative, maybe fundamentalist yep. uh, Baptist church yep. uh, that had a little legalism in it without mm-hmm. knowing it. Yep. And so I grew up, grew up in that and yep. I didn't even know that I had it. Right. Um, but I started listening to Rick about 35 years ago. Um, and his messages, right. they, they brought grace right. uh, aside, uh, to, to the gospel that I had somehow largely missed. Mm. And, um, God did a refreshing in my heart and I've followed Rick. I've never met him, though I've been out to a couple of his conferences. But I've followed him and read, I read everything he does. And and I tell you what, God has used him. He he's discipled me without knowing it, right? Through right. his resources, right? Very cool. And yeah, love him. Hugely influential. He's obviously a great leader. He's you know made sure. a huge impact for sure on the on the ministry. Um, well, let's get into the personal life. You know, you're a busy guy. That's a lot of cards to write every week. I'm sure your yes. hand gets cramped. <laughs> what do you just do for fun uh, when you want to kick back, relax, enjoy life a little bit, Bruce? I love to golf. Oh, nice. Uh, I love to read. Mm-hmm. And I've just recently uh, gone with uh, one of my daughters zip lining for the first mm, time. And that cool. is now going to become a regular family activity for us. Nice. Get the heart rate up a little bit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it, was, it was a great rush. Well, Bruce, Bruce, this has been great. I've, I've really appreciated you being on the show. Thank you so much for, you know, for, for, for being here. If people want to get in touch with the church, uh, sugarcreek.net, is that the best place for them to connect? It is. Great. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. You've give, already given us your phone number, so there's no other way people want to get, need to get in touch. <laughs> but Bruce, is there, uh, you know, I just really appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you so much. You got it, Rich. Thanks for having me. I love what you're doing. Keep up the great work, my friend. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary.